for your info. All right. Our class for the day is going to be about switches and receptacles. We are, I see you're excited, Bill. That's good. I know, my friend. Uh, what we, what I brought with me, guys, I brought a couple of switches and a couple of, as you move through this, um, this chapter, the major thing about this chapter, guys, is when you design an electrical system for a commercial building, you have to use spec type receptacles, not residential type receptacles. So I brought a couple of receptacles here with me. And the other thing I want to talk about, guys, as we go through this chapter, um, talk about color coding for different type of system industry standard. So I brought a 208 industry standard, 208 color code cable. As you can see over here, you have the red, the blue, uh, the black, and the white. And you have the orange, brown, yellow, and, um, and gray. I don't have the gray here. Um, for a 48277. These are the color coded industry standards for the not code, color coding for different type of voltage system in the building. Uh, this chapter talks about this, these two things. A couple of things. So when we go commercial, we did this one guys in the residential. When we go to the commercial business, <clears throat> um, the switches and the receptacles, Brooks that are going to be installing have to be spec type receptacles. What's the difference? 33 cents versus a uh, buck 50 or three dollar receptacle. Very important. So when you specify your project brand, you're going to specify spec type receptacles and switches, meaning they are more durable, more robust uh, than that, that tiny little ones they use for residential that's 33 cents and, and 40 cents. Very important. So the switches and the receptacles, uh, proper rating for the switches and receptacles, we'll talk about them. Um, install various types of receptacles correctly um we talked guys about three-way and four-way switch this is a reminder um and i'm going to pick on my friend spencer today if you don't know how to wire a three-way switch guys and you want to be a designer an estimator project manager maybe you should review the stuff that we have here for you um and we have a couple of labs that you can go wire them so we have a single pole uh, three-way, four-way, and uh, and double pole switches to control lighting circuit that we're going to be using. And these are all high voltage. A couple of things that we're going to be doing. Receptacles, guys, the smarter than Chad Curdy decided to go and uh, name all the configuration, which is NEMA, all the configuration of the receptacles based on two um, in, in two criteria, guys. And mainly two criteria, voltage and amps. So NEMA... If you can see here, the NEMA National Electrical Association, uh, Manufacturing Association, they developed um, a standard for locking and unlocking receptacles. So if you go to Texas and you have a 20 amp, 120 receptacle uh, plug, it will, it will fit in a 120 um, 20 amp receptacle all over the, the United States. These are the standards, not true, uh, Eric, if you, uh, if you go, my friend, overseas. I don't know if some of you guys were overseas. The minute that you need to go when you go overseas is you have to ask yourself for an adapter, a physical adapter, and a voltage adapter if, if you have uh, the voltage is different. So that's very, very important. <laughs> Since we're in the US, we're going to use the NEMA. Um, so the two major components that NEMA rate the receptacle are based on two things. Number one is the amp, and number two is the voltage. This will be on the test tomorrow on Friday. They're going to be, when they ask you, how do we configure the receptacle, guys, it's configured based on two criteria, voltage and amps. And I'm going to show you guys a couple of things. And then we get into uh, hospital-grade receptacles, more robust, more better, uh, durable receptacles, uh, more expensive, obviously, that you can use in hospitals. Why do they use them? Severe abuse or heavy use. Um, and I'm going to pass right here, guys, a couple of receptacles that I have with me that's actually um, receptacle grade, hospital receptacle grade. You're going to see that they have to be identified by that little green dot over here. They're more durable than the ones that you see in residential, more expensive, obviously, probably two, three times more expensive. So that's the receptacle that they use um, in hospital. The only difference is they design it more in, in, in more robust, more strong to, to handle the abuse and the use. Before I move into from NEMA configuration, uh, please, and this will be on the test tomorrow, uh, just to bring your, to get your attention, page 62 and 63, uh, Bill, my friend, we have all the configuration of, if you guys look at uh, page 63, uh, 62 and 63, please, 
This is all the configuration for receptacles and plugs that we use in the US based on NEMA. So if you guys look at, there are two pages. Page number one, which is 62 of Spencer, it talks about non-locking. These are, these ones guys are called non-locking because you don't plug it in and lock it. Non-locking type receptacle, these are the, these ones. And the locking receptacles, I don't have it here with me, but these are the ones that here, here's that one right here. You're looking at it, this is the locking type receptacle. You plug it in and you lock it. You plug it in, this one, you're looking at that one, that round thing, plug it in and lock it. So locking and unlocking receptacle, two pages. Okay, so if you guys look at the top, the columns, the columns goes 15 amp, 20, 30, 50, 60. These are the amps. If you go to the rows, the rows divided to voltages, different type of voltages. So you can see there, it goes from 120 to 600, 125 all the way to 600. Um, and they also go by two pole, two wire, two pole, two wire that you can use as a neutral and a ground. You can use as two hots. So it goes by two pole, two wire, two pole, three wire, um, a three wire grounding and two pole, three wire, two pole, four wire grounding and four pole, four wire and four pole, five wire grounding. These are all the configuration of, um, of the receptacles, basically the non-locking type uh, receptacles. You may for general purpose, uh, locking uh, plugs and receptacles. So if you guys look at, um, let's look at, uh, for example, if you can look at a three pole, three wire receptacles, 250, can you guys see that one? So if you see the NEMA standard 615, if you can see a NEMA standard 615, um, 615R, if you see a 615R guys, by the way, R, R stands, if you see six, if you see a 6-15R, what type of a, R stands for receptacle? If you, instead of R, you put a P here, it becomes 6-15P, it stands for a plug. So please, the configuration, if the name of the NEMA has an R at the end, it's a receptacle, if it has a P, it's a plug. That's how they name. So if you guys look at 6-15R, it's actually a 250 receptacle, 15M 250 receptacle with two wires. You have a hot, uh, two hots, and you have a ground, two hots and a ground, two hots and a ground. Can you guys see that? It, it's look, if you're looking at page 62, Page 62, and if you look at uh, uh, a two pole, three wire, which is the second set, and if you look at voltage 250, item number six, basically. Item number six, you see that little item number six in the upper right corner of these. If you look at this one, guys, and I'm only looking at 6 15R, this is a 250 voltage, uh, 15 amp, uh, basically two pole, three wire, uh, two hots and a ground. That's how they rate all these receptacles. The one bred next to it has a P in it. The same configuration except a P. So that's that, that's the name, the NEMA name for a plug. Why this is important, guys, for you, especially those of you who are going to be working in industrial, you will be at one time specifying uh, a three-phase receptacles and, plug, and, and plugs locking and unlocking type. So, for example, I'm going to go to the second page, which is locking type. If I want to specify a locking type receptacle, guys, let's say I have... Um, I have a, a, I need a three pole, four wire with a ground. Three pole, can you guys go to page 63, please? And go to uh, one, two, three, four, four cluster of rows. Uh, the one that says three pole, four wire grounded. Okay, that's, what, that's my system. I need to design a 480 system. Can you guys see three phase 480? I need a plug for three phase 480. And I need this plug to be 60 amp plug. A 60 amp plug, three phase 480, okay? That because I want to plug a machine that I bought from China. If you guys look at three phase 480 and I need a plug for 60 amps, your plug will be L1660R, which is a locking, L stand for locking, um, and 16, um, L16-60R, 60 is the R, and uh, 16 is the number, 16 stand for the number that Nima gave this receptacle. Can you guys see that little number 16? Everybody can see that. If you want to find a, a plug for this, uh, Muhammad, my friend, the one right next to it has a P at the end, which is a plug. So if I find a machine, a 60 amp machine that needs a plug in a receptacle, I need to size that plug in a receptacle. My plug for is this, is it's a 480 three phase um, with a ground, three phase only with a ground, no neutral. This would be an L1660R and an L1660P. You don't have to memorize this, guys. I have one. 
or two of these to use guys on on Monday, on on Friday for the test. So all what I have to do when you reach the question that talks about the NEMA rating, I will tell you uh, L560P. What is L560P? So you're gonna go to find L560P and tell me if it's a plug or receptacle. What's the amp? What's the voltage? Now you're not gonna memorize this. Thanks God, Ryan. You're gonna go open this page when you see this on the test. Open the page and just go read the page. Any question, Bill, my friend, Camille? Any question, guys, about that? So I want you to be able to read this table. The first one is non-locking. The second one is locking. If it's P, it's a plug. If it's R, it's a receptacle. And then they have a couple of um, acronyms that they add to make it voltage um, and, um, and, and, and amp and three phase and single phase. You do not have to memorize all of them, but I want you guys to be aware of them. I want you to be aware of them, please. So if you look, if you guys look at um, 120, uh, 5-15R, you're looking right here, you're looking right here at 5-15R. 5-15R, it's 120, uh, two-pole receptacle, ground and a neutral, and uh, a neutral and a hot and a ground. That's it. That's that's what they call it, 5-15R. Um, and the plug, of course, everybody knows what the plug for this, very common uh, plug. If you guys look at 5-20R, Brad, here's a 5-20R. 5-20R is that one. See that slot? They, they slot the hot to make it fit for the hot right here. It has a little slot in the end. So that's, you're looking at 5-20R. And the plug that goes through 5-20R could be um, it could be 5-15P, uh, if you look how they design it, or 5-20P. Uh, uh, Any question guys about how to read this table? That's the most important thing in this chapter, is how to read this table. And some of you guys might say, well, chassis at 20 and 30 amp receptacle. No, you will be specifying receptacle for certain modes based on locking or based on, on non-locking guys receptacle based on three phase receptacle. We're not familiar with three phase receptacle. A lot of us are not. So please be aware of that one. Any question? <clears throat> Any question about how to read this? Straightforward amp voltage, how many poles? Um, sometimes, most of the time, <clears throat> let me give you a hint. If you guys are using single phase, Almost all the receptacles now have to have a grounding slot. Almost all of them. Even though still there's still some that does not have a ground, but when you install all of them, you have to think you have to have a ground, at least. If it's a three-phase receptacle, most likely you're going to have three-phase and a ground only. Most likely. Most loads take three-phase and, and a ground. Some loads take a three-phase and a neutral. So that will leave you with what? Three-phase, neutral, and a ground, five poles or five weights. Five ones. If you're a single phase, guys, you're going to have <clears throat> single phase, you're going to have a ground and you're going to have a hot neutral, that's a single phase, or a hot to hot single phase too. So that's kind of your combination. Any question, guys, about how to use <clears throat> NEMA configuration for receptacles, especially the high end receptacle, the receptacles that, um, that's, as I said, that high end, meaning high voltage, high amps. Any question, guys, about this? As I said, you are looking right now at a grid receptacle that has that green dot to identify it more robust. That's a uh, 15R, what did we say? It? It's a uh, 5-15R. Okay. Um, the manufacturer of the receptacles, guys, they identify the, the slots where you can, or the terminals. They identify the terminals, the grounding terminal, almost all of them. If the grounding terminal here is going to have a G, all these acronyms, when you see them, some of you guys might, might not be aware, but you're going to be a project manager. At least you, you should be aware of that one. That slot right here, if you guys look, it's green. It looks the screw is green. They have to be identified as a green, and they have to put um, either identified by green or put a G next to it or a ground or something to identify it as, as a, grounding, uh, a grounding slot. They have a gauge that goes through it and so forth. So that's identified as a green. Uh, very important to identify the equipment grounding conductor terminal. And the second one, guys, is this is the Y. This is the neutral. The neutral conductor or the grounded conductor. It's either silver colored terminal marked with W. Most of the time marked with W. So these are easy. W or green, piece of cake. The phases are, or the poles are different, guys. They mark them with X, Y, and Z. They mark the uh, X, Y, and Z. So X could be phase A, phase B, phase C. So that's a good combination, phase A, phase B, phase C. So if you have a, a plug 
they have a G, a W, and an X, and a Y, and a Z. So uh, this will be your ground, this will be your neutral, this will be phase A, phase B, and phase C. Phase A color code, phase A, phase B, phase C by code, guys. You, don't, you can use any color for these uh, phases that's not, that's not grounded conductor color or grounding conductor color, which is the green and the white and the gray. Any question guys about identifying the terminals? These are the terminals, Mr. Bab. The terminals for the hot, if you can see the neutral is silver type. Can you guys see it from there? As you move, the neutral is kind of silvery looking, the green, they identify them. So color code them, identify them for you as you install the systems. Any question then, my friend? No? That's a good question. Okay, here's what we talked about, guys. Um, I want to bring to your attention that <clears throat> that the amps and the voltage rating of, of the receptacles will be um, printed right onto the receptacle somewhere in the back or the front where it tells you what the voltage and what the amp for each receptacle. I do have a, a British type receptacles in my office if anybody wants to look at them. I think it's 16 amps and 250. They rate them for 16 amps, 250. Or 13 amps, I can't remember if they were 13 or 16. Okay. Um, for uh, electronic equipment, guys, to reduce noise, they have, um, we have what, what we call it isolated ground that goes with them, isolated ground receptacle. Isolated ground receptacle, um, isolated ground receptacle, my friend, is, <clears throat> is right in here. <coughs> isolated ground receptacle. Here's an isolated ground receptacle. <clears throat> it has to be marked with orange, the face, or have an orange <clears throat> face. This is an isolated ground receptacle, means if you guys look at it and I pass it, when you connect the ground here, the connection to the ground, it goes directly to the slot, but the frame, Spencer, that frame is actually not connected to the grounding slot right here. It's isolated. So long story short, when you have an isolated ground like this, you're going to have two grounds coming to the box. Ground number one is going to be tied directly to the uh, terminal, the grounding terminal, and ground the grounding slot here which grounds all the electronic equipment. The second ground, which happens to be the conduit, is going to be tied to ground the frame of the receptacle, uh, which most of the time comes through the conduit. Most of the time comes through the conduit, will ground the frame of the receptacle, and your in, in, uh, isolated, insulated ground will ground the slots right here, which in return ground your computer. Why do they use this one? Noises. Um, to, to reduce the, uh, the damage for electronic equipment, the, uh, mistake that electronic equipment can do. So all data centers, guys, they, they specify sensitive electronic equipment, they specify this type of receptacles. So if you have a data center, most likely you're going to be using isolated grounding receptacle. Isolated grounding receptacle have to be identified with an orange uh, triangle like this or an orange face by code. You have to identify it. And you're going to bring two grounds to the box. One ground to ground the frame of the box and another ground to ground, which is right here to ground the slot right here. And I can pass these. You guys can look at them in a second here. Any question guys about the isolated ground? Why do we use an isolated ground? Isolated ground with an isolated ground receptacle. So sensitive electronic equipment, noise, which is computer. Why? Because if you want to type chat, you don't want a bread to show up on the, on the screen, for example. You know, you need, you don't need, uh, if you type 10 million, you don't want it to, t to type uh, uh, 1,000. Okay, here's what we talked about isolated ground, guys. I want to bring you to your attention a couple of things here. <clears throat> isolated ground, look how, I want you guys to, to just to show, see how the slot here, this is basically grounding here, and these two together going in here all the way back to the main panel. They can send them all the way back to the main panel most of the time. Or if you have a, if you have a panel, that feeds a data center like this, what they do is they bring an isolated ground to the panel, they isolate the <laughs> grounding bar inside the panel, the grounding bar inside the panel, they have two grounding bars, one for the everything else, the frame, and the other one is for the, the, the surface. And they pull an insulated, isolated grounding conductor all the way back to the main panel, all the way back to the main panel. So look at how this conductor has to be isolated ground, it goes all the way to the panel. So that's my isolated ground. What's the alternative? The alternative is, here's my conduit. The alternative is to ground it directly to the conduit. Can you guys see that? Now, here's where my ground coming here. 
This is a non-isolated. You're going to be in this situation probably 90% of the time here, maybe 10% of the time. You need for electronic webments that feeds data. That's how you're going to be uh, sending your data. FYI, the project that we have, our project, it's required the receptacle that feed the cubicles. We are requiring two grounds. One will be grounding the isolated ground receptacles. The other one will be grounding the box. So where is the ground here, guys? There are two grounds. Everybody can see that there are two grounds. One ground is that box here. It's actually grounded, grounding the frame, just the frame. This, this, everything here is grounded to the red, and the receptacle itself is actually grounded through the, the, the green. Any question is about that? Is that a separate mounting strap, or is that actually just on the device? This one? This this little here? No. Mounting strap. Mounting strap. This is part of the device. Yeah, yeah, the green one. Yeah, this one is yeah. part of the device. This one is part, yeah, part of the device, that little thing. Any question guys about this? So this is big deal for commercial industrial building as we go through them. Any question, isolated ground. What we do guys in data centers, we have, a, <clears throat> we have a main panel. Here's my main panel coming here. And I pull another panel here. This is my 225 amp panel. And I pull an isolated grounding bar, isolated ground from here all the way to the ground in the main, main panel. And in the isolated ground, I start grounding all my receptacles to this isolated ground, all my circuits, that pulls it in return all the way to the main. Pulls it in return. You don't have to take every brand circuit to the main. You can group them in one sub-panel, which is the most common, in a receptacle sub-panel, 225 amp, and you pull them in an isolated ground all the way to the main. That's how you achieve, you achieve less interference um, of your system, less interference of your system. Any question guys about this? There you go, right timing. Hey. How are you guys? Good. Hey. Are you my friend? I'm good. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Let me stop here. Hello.